Hey booktube, it's Greg from Coffee Slash Books. I'm doing something a little bit different this time. Um, I'm sharing with you that I am starting graduate school. Well, actually I've already started. I'm going into the fourth week. I meant to do a vlog of my first week um, and that didn't plan out too well because I don't always know what I'm doing. So I'm just now sitting down to film the intro for the rest of what you'll see in this vlog. Um, hopefully I can keep up with it or maybe I'll try to do something monthly. So um, before I get into it, if you're not interested in graduate school, um, if you don't want to see what I do for all of this, um, please just skip this video. I'll still talk about other books and things. Um, I just wanted to do this graduate vlog thing for a couple different reasons. Um, so first things first, I'm going to graduate school for English literature. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is probably not like other people's reasons. So as you know, 2020 has been like an insane year. Um, at the beginning of 2020, like New Year's, around New Year's, um, I experienced a major life change um, in my personal life that greatly altered my future. Um, I don't really want to get into it. If anyone wants to know, I guess I can share. It's not like anything too crazy, but basically my entire life changed and my plans for this year changed. Um, so I kind of got derailed on what I wanted to do. So I decided that it was time to do something that I was passionate about, that I wanted to pursue for myself as like a personal goal. So um, I already have a master's degree that I got over a decade ago for my career, which I have now. So I'm perfectly happy with my career. I love what I do. Um, I'm settled in that regard. Um, it wasn't until much later that I really started to get into literature and books. Like basically when I started book, my booktube channel, which was, I guess, two years ago, three years ago. Um, yeah, so uh, long story short, I needed a personal change and I made it happen. So I attended an open house. Um, met with some professors, interviewed, went through the whole application process. Um, so yes, I am going for a master's in English literature. Um, uh, what else do I want to say about that? Oh, and I will be working as a graduate assistant for the university. That was a big selling point for me. Um, this is like one of the only schools that I've come across that actually has assistantships for part-time students um, because they do have a nine to five regular full-time job. Um, and I can't do things during the day, but they're very flexible. I think it's maybe based on um, like their interest in you and if they see potential, I do not know. Um, I was really excited. They don't advertise it until you're already um, meeting with professors and kind of in. So that when I found that out, I was like, whoa. <laughs> so that kind of excited me because I would like to get some experience in academia when I was a grad student before, forever ago. Um, I did work as a tutor and all those kind of things, and I really enjoyed it. Don't want to be a full, try to go for a full professorship because, as we know, the current state of higher education around the world in the U.S., um, that doesn't seem really plausible for the masses. So that's not my goal. So I just want to say that this is to fulfill a personal goal. It's not to advance my career or change careers or become a teacher. I mean, it was one, one thing I'd like to do in the future is adjunct part-time, but that's not my goal here. Um, some people go to graduate school for the purpose of completely changing their careers. Um, for me, that is, this is not the case. So I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'm, I started a couple weeks ago taking two classes and working part time. So I average seven to 10 hours a week of work for the university and then take two, three credit courses. First one I'm taking is your basic, um, interpreting textual, uh, no, I'm sorry, Building Textual Interpretation and Literary Theory. It's a requirement for all graduate students. And the second class I'm taking is a seminar in pre-18th century literature, um, which is actually focusing on gender, race, and empire. So it's all about colonialism, um, the view of the sexes, um, slavery. So they actually chose this topic because of everything going on in our country right now. Um, so it was really great to see that they kind of adjust um, the topics courses to things that are really relevant. So excited for that. So it's two nights a week. Um, like I said, I work Monday through Friday. Sometimes I travel for work. Well, not now, too soon. Um, so I'm trying to juggle everything. And I'm also president of my undergraduate alumni board for here. So um, that's not like an extreme time commitment, but it is, I think, you know, it adds to how many, like, for example, I have something every night this week between alumni group and the university. So it, it kind of adds to like the craziness of my schedule. Anyway, so um, 
trying something different. Steve Partridge, who I will link his channel below, um, told me that he recommended trying to do like a straight line. I don't know the words for this stuff. Um, <laughs> straight view when I'm filming myself instead of how I was doing it like on top of my computer or in front of my computer. So we'll see how this works. Um, he's great. Um, if you're an Anglophile, go watch his channel. He has a great accent. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Um, anyway, so without further ado, this is my first week of vlog as a graduate student. Um, one thing I do want to mention is there's actually not a lot of vlogs or grad school advice or anything on YouTube booktube. Um, I found a few people who um, are doing graduate studies in English and literature. Um, I will say the majority of them are like kind of like your typical grad students, like they're maybe 22, 23 years old, live with their parents, nothing wrong with that, um, but that is their full-time job. Like they go to school because they are either in a PhD program or they wanna apply for a PhD program and like maybe they work part-time. But for me, I'm someone who has to pay all my bills, completely independent on my own. I'm not 22 years old. Um, so I kind of wanted to film this video also to show people that, you know, you can do this kind of thing even if you're out of that stage of life. Um, and also maybe a little bit of like a memory for me. Um, I don't remember a lot of my feelings and things that I went through when I did undergrad and graduate school forever ago. So it's kind of nice to do this now as you're adult, an adult. I think you appreciate it more. Um, so that's another reason why I'm doing this. So. No offense to people who like live with themselves, you know, live with their parents and their mom cooks for them and they don't have to worry about paying rent and stuff. Um, so they can just spend all day reading and studying and all that. That's cool. That's like their thing. That is not my situation. So it's a little bit different. But anyway, um, we'll see how this goes. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thank you all and take care in these trying times. So I just got a package from Amazon which should hopefully be some of my textbooks for this semester. So I figured I would share it with you. Open it up and see what we got. All right. Fun stuff, isn't it? Okay, so. So far we have Eco Criticism by Greg Ger Gerard, um, The New Critical Idiom. This is for my building textual, I should have looked up what it's called, building textual interpretation and literary theory course. It's basically the intro course that every grad student in the English department has to take when they start. Um, so there was a couple different books for that. So I think I'll have more. Next one is Marilyn Robinson's Housekeeping. So maybe this is a novel that we're going to have to read for the criticism class um, to criticize it, I guess. Okay, we got two more. Here we go. Uh, a Very Short Introduction, Literary Theory. I've read a couple of these books for other topics. I think when I was in Greece, I bought one that was like for Alexander the Great. When I was in Russia, I bought one for Catherine the Great. Like, it's, it's kind of like a good intro. This will be good because I have like no actual professional experience with literary theory. So um, having this kind of book is less scary than maybe having like a big crazy textbook on it for those who maybe have had years of experience taking literary theory courses. And last but not least, I need to start reading this today because it's for my, um, my seminar in pre-1800 literature course and we're doing a topic study of gender, race, and empire, um, which is very important, especially going on right now. So it's Afra Ben's Aronico. Um, I'm excited to read this. It's what our the first part of the course is going to be about. And my first class I have next Thursday, the first week of the semester, I think we actually have to have the first half of the book read and like have certain things picked out to discuss because the style of this course is like a seminar where we, the students teach each other um, and the professor kind of just like observes, I guess. So we have to prepare a discussion and um, all this kind of stuff. So I remember getting the syllabus the other day and it was like five pages long just for that part. And I was like, oh God, what am I getting myself into? But anyway, so I should have a couple more books coming, but in the meantime, at least we have some of these things to get us started. And of course, because I'm a freak, I ordered a 12 pack of highlighters because I figure I'm gonna need them this semester. 
Um, came a little damaged, but hey, that's Amazon, that's capitalism, that's what you get. But these, I've used a lot of highlighters in my life, and these ones that are actually called highlighter with like the word H-I-I, -I, and the, the thin ones are like my absolute favorite. I feel like they work the best um, and never let me down. So it was like 12 pack was on sale for like four bucks. So obviously when you're starting graduate school where you have to read a lot and take notes and do all these articles and stuff like that, I figured it would be a good investment. So that's what I have in this haul and hopefully tomorrow the day after I'll have another um, package with more textbooks. Hi, so I am headed to the campus that's near my apartment, which is basically like one of the graduate school main buildings, um, to do a little reading, take an afternoon to have some coffee. I need a break from work anyway. And it's like a beautiful day out. Not hot yet. Well, not yet. What am I talking about? Summer's supposed to be over soon. <laughs> it feels like we're getting a fall, which excites me. So, um, yeah, gonna go try to do some reading for my first class that I have next Thursday to try to get ahead of the game because I'm afraid I'll be fall behind because working full time while also being a graduate assistant and taking classes might have not been the best choice, but um, it is what it is and I'm happy to be doing this. So I'm just trying to vlog a little bit and get some practice with that. So. So I doubt that any of the actual stuff in the building is open yet because the semester doesn't start till this weekend, even though freshmen have been moving in this week. So I'm not actually gonna go in there to hang out since it's such a nice day. The Starbucks next to it is open. Um, so I figured I would just read outside for a little bit. But um, I'm excited to be able to actually go somewhere um, and get stuff done once it opens next week. So yay, nerd alert. So I just finished reading um, the first book for one of my classes in pre-18th century literature, which is Alfred Ben's Orinoco. Um, it's not that long of a book. It's less than 80 pages. Absolutely loved it. Um, I was a bit intimidated going into it thinking because it's from the 1600s that I'd have trouble understanding the language. Um, but it actually was way more modern than I thought. The only few differences were minor vocabulary phrases. Um, and it actually shows how language evolved over time by using some of those uh, words. But um, I'm on campus. It's during the day. I'm taking a break from work. I'm in a study room. It's really nice. Um, today is the first day of the fall semester, so it's a bit chaotic. Um, our campus has a mask policy, so everyone has to wear a mask even when they're walking outside. Um, I'm assuming, because I'm in this individual study room, that I don't need to wear a mask. Um, things are a little bit unclear and a little bit, little bit weird. For example, in the campus that I'm in now, I went for a lunch break and got some food, which is really good. They have an awesome, like, homemade cafeteria in this building. Um, but there's no seating in the cafeteria. Like, they don't want people sitting down in there, so they're, they took away all the tables and chairs. So I went out into the lobby in, like, the entrance of the building where you could eat your lunch, but I just felt so weird, like, sitting there eating. There was no one else in there, but I felt like the, the security guards and stuff kept looking over at me. Um, because I was like taking my mask off to put some food in my mouth, but I'm just like, what do you expect? Like people are here all day, you have to eat lunch and you don't have a cafeteria where you can spread out tables and eat. So I have to eat somewhere else. So that's a bit weird, but I'm sure it's just because of the situation. Everyone's kind of adapting. So, so I'm done for today. Um, I have a class tomorrow in, um, building textual interpretation. I thought it's very odd that I have not heard a single thing from that professor at all. Um, we, we, weren't, we weren't even sent a syllabus on Canvas or anything, whereas in my Thursday class, I'm already done the first book because she's been communicating with us um, frequently, which has been awesome because it's helped me kind of get ready. So don't know what to expect tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. And now I have to go back to my regular full-time job. <laughs> social distancing, which is nice. I'm the only person in here. Um, so I'm just doing a little bit of reading for my criticism class. And one of the first things we're reading is Jonathan Kohler's Literary Theory, a very short introduction. Um, 
I read the first chapter and I don't like it, so we'll see how that goes. And I'm also trying to get some work work done. I have to pick something up on pick something else up on campus before I head back home, and then log back into work for my full time job because I have a bunch of meetings and stuff. And then um, tonight I have class from six to nine, and it's my pre eighteenth century seminar literature class. So it should be interesting. We'll see how. We go. This concludes my first graduate school vlog. Thank you for watching and let's keep going.